Today, we're going to be making these anime characters run the gauntlet to see which one can make it to the end. Each gauntlet has five characters selected randomly from a pool, and we're only covering the anime versions of these characters. So first up, we've got Accelerator trying his hand at the gauntlet, and his first opponent is... Zenitsu. Okay, is Accelerator going to get past him, or is Zenitsu going to introduce Accelerator to breaks? Zenitsu is absolutely getting washed in this fight. Zenitsu's lightning sword techniques do absolutely nothing against Accelerator's reflector shield. And yeah, and we don't even have to think hard about this because we've already seen Accelerator basically turn Academy City's top lightning user into fodder. I mean, she couldn't even land a hit on the guy and all of her attacks were reflected right back at her. To make matters worse, Zenitsu has to get into close range to actually strike him and in that situation, he has no way to escape the blowback from Accelerator's reflection. Zenitsu basically loses across the board, except probably when it comes to speed. But even then, he can't dodge Accelerator's attacks forever, assuming he even could in the first place. Eventually, the Sleeping Swordsman will be forced to take a permanent nap. With that, Accelerator moves on to face his next opponent, Shigaraki. Shigaraki is a weird case because his decay quirk doesn't use any vectors. Since he has a way to get around Accelerator's reflection, do you think that he can actually beat Accelerator? I think it's a good thing that Shigaraki has a couple extra hands lying around because he's going to need them if he tries to touch Accelerator. While the actual decay from his quirk doesn't have vectors, we know that Shigaraki usually has to touch people to activate it. And most people that have tried to touch Accelerator ended up with broken hands. Luckily for Shigaraki, he can decay things without touching it using a domino effect. But that doesn't matter too much because Accelerator can easily stay out of his range by flying. And Accelerator's shield is going to reflect any debris that might come near him. So Accelerator wins and moves on to his next opponent, Anos Vodigo. So this is where Accelerator's run ends because honestly he is no match for the Demon King himself. We don't even need to go into all of the ridiculous spells that Anos can use because he has one tool that Accelerator has no answer for, and that's the Magic Sword of Destruction. The Magic Sword of Destruction has the power to destroy all laws, change reality, and nullify everything. The sword's basically going to be a much more powerful version of Toma, and we know how their fights tend to go. Yeah, it's safe to say Anos wins this convincingly, so let's move on to the next gauntlet. The next character we have running the gauntlet is the part human, part god, full-time servant, Berserker. And his first opponent is... Jotaro Kujo. Since stands can only be seen and fought by other stand users, we're going to give Berserker the ability to actually duke it out with Star Platinum. But in the end, that doesn't even matter because Jotaro is going to get smoked by Berserker. One of the perks of Berserker's Noble Phantasm is that he can't be affected by attacks that are rank B or lower. And while there's no way to directly compare these ranks to attacks in other universes, I think it's safe to say that rank A attacks are powerful attacks. Much more powerful, I think, than anything Star Platinum is capable of. While Star Platinum is a powerful stand, his speed and precision is more impressive, and those things wouldn't allow him to damage Berserker. Even if he does manage to damage Berserker, he would have to kill him 12 times to actually win. And that's just not going to happen when you take into account how powerful Berserker is. There's no way he dies 12 times before he manages to kill Jotaro once. Jotaro's one trump card... <laughs> ...is not going to be useful here. Stopping time won't matter if he can't actually damage Berserker, and it won't help him run away either. This ends up being an easy win for Berserker. The next character is... Tengen Uzui. Honestly, it's not much to say here. Tengen loses pretty easily. Just like Jotaro, he doesn't have the strength to actually damage Berserker. And he doesn't have any OP moves that would let him kill Berserker 12 times. At the end of the day, Berserker is a weapon of mass destruction fighting a ninja. So he clears Tengen easily. On to the next opponent who happens to be Octagawa. This fight would be over quick because we've already seen what happens when Octagawa fights an opponent with overwhelming strength and speed. 
Fitzgerald was that opponent, and he destroyed Octagawa despite all of the ways that he can use Rashoma. Berserker is many times stronger than Fitzgerald, so Octagawa stands no chance here. After two fights that were very free, Berserker goes up against All Might. Okay, this one might be pretty controversial because this is actually the hardest one so far. Depending on how you look at it, this fight can lean towards Berserker or All Might. And just so we're clear, we're talking about All Might from the anime and not the movies where he's in his prime. And this might sound crazy, but All Might might be stronger than Berserker. Yeah, I think based on what we've seen from these two in their respective shows, it's possible to say All Might might have a slight speed and strength advantage over Berserker. But despite this advantage, I still think Berserker wins here. Once again, Berserker has to be killed 12 times if you want to defeat him. And I'm not sure All Might can do that before he's killed once. Another issue is that Berserker is constantly regenerating while All Might is losing stamina. And if that wasn't bad enough, Berserker also has the ability to nullify the attack that previously killed him. Even if we count each smash as a separate unique attack, he only has 9 of them, so it's not enough to actually finish off Berserker. So Berserker wins this fight against All Might unless All Might can take off multiple lives with a single attack. Berserker's final opponent in this gauntlet is... Netsuro. We've seen what Netsuro was capable of when he went against the Ant King, and that isn't enough to beat Berserker. Like we've seen in that fight, Netsuro's attacks have great speed, but they lack the strength to do a fatal blow to Berserker. The only attack that Netsuro has that could possibly stand a chance is Miniature Rose. Even then, Netsuro would end up killing himself, and he would need to do that 11 plus times. So congratulations Berserker, you're our first character to clear the gauntlet. And on to our final character, Tanjiro. And he'll be fighting humanity's strongest soldier, Levi. Oh man, Tanjiro got a bad draw with this one. Honestly, I think Levi wins here, and I know some of you are going to hate that idea. Especially since we're coming off of the Entertainment District arc, where Tanjiro got some pretty nice buffs. But in terms of strength, Levi has been flying under the radar for years now. We all know that Tanjiro has superhuman abilities, but what tends to get overlooked is that Levi does too. Tanjiro can cut through large boulders with his katana, and I think Levi could do the same thing if his blades were designed for cutting something other than flesh. You have to remember, his Ackerman blood allows him to use a portion of a titan's power in a human form. It's hard to say exactly how much power he gets, but it's pretty clear that he's much more powerful than the average human. Then when we start comparing speed, Tanjiro never has any impressive feats, unless we're talking about when he was not breathing in his fight against Daki. Levi's speed primarily comes from his ODM gear, which allows him to zip around at breakneck speeds. We've seen him cross large distances in seconds and even dodge bullets at point blank range. In combat, he's able to attack so fast that Titans can't even react to what he's doing, including the female Titan and the Beast Titan. The guy literally turns into the world's most dangerous pizza cutter and carves up Titans for dinner. Tanjiro would have a hard time landing hits on Levi because he can change directions on a dime. But this is all assuming that they fight in an environment that allows Levi to use his ODM gear to the fullest potential. With the right environments, Levi can win this. But if the environment favors Tanjiro, then he's going to have the upper hand. But because we can't give Tanjiro a decisive victory here, he can't move on. So if you like this type of video, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Let us know in the comments if you think a gauntlet should have went differently, or let us know which characters you want to see run the gauntlet next time. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time.